So my freezer is set to negative uh, 15 degrees Celsius. We um, are going to see the super cooling effect. Uh, we had three bottles. The first one failed because I disturbed it previously. The second one failed. The one that I have in my hand right now failed because uh, it spontaneously started to crystallize and then freeze up. So it just goes to show that you have to be very careful when you're doing this experiment. So now we're going to attempt it with the third Fiji water bottle. Being much more careful this time, I slowly pull it out, try not to disturb it too much, don't even attempt to close the freezer, and slowly tip it right side up. And my intention was to grab a, <clears throat> a, temp a temperature, carefully unscrewing the bottle. And I have my thermometer set in degrees Celsius. Uh, might might have a little bit of crystallization forming on that tip, but as you can see, we have a temperature of negative 5.8 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we know that the water is cooled below its freezing temperature. Now we try to disturb the water, clear off some condensation, flicking it, and there it goes. Pretty cool. How is this phenomenon similar to undercooling of metals? Just like liquid water, liquid metals have an undercooling temperature as well. Water, for example, can undercool to about negative 40 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees below its freezing temperature of zero degrees. Molten gold, for example, has a freezing temperature of 962 degrees Celsius and can undercool to about 250 degrees Celsius. We typically don't want metals to undercool and experience what's called homogeneous nucleation because this can make the metal too soft and weak. Because of this, impurities are typically added like titanium or boron. So that solidification can occur heterogeneously uh, with the impurities acting as nucleation sites. This is uh, known as inoculation. In theory, pure water is more likely to experience undercooling and when disturbed, causes an instant freezing effect. We don't want this to happen when we cast metals. Fiji water is actually filled with minerals and is not pure. I actually performed this experiment on a couple different samples. I tried to supercool a glass bottle of distilled water and a plastic bottle of reverse osmosis water. Neither experiment was able to supercool until I used Fiji water. I happen to have a TDS instrument, or Total Dissolved Solvents instrument, that I purchased on Amazon a few years back when I was installing my reverse osmosis filter under my kitchen sink. As you can see, Fiji water had significantly more dissolved solids. I don't know why Fiji water had such success, but I think it could have to do with being in a newly sealed container. It could be that the previous samples were too disturbed in the freezer, which caused them to prematurely crystallize. It's also possible that the inside walls of the containers were different. Since Fiji water has a new smooth plastic bottle, there may have been very few defects in the plastic to allow nucleation sites, whereas my plastic and glass bottles could have been filled with defects because they're in reusable containers. So some tips that I learned are one, set your freezer to the highest freezing temperature. If it's set too cold, the water will cool too rapidly. You want a steady, slow cooling rate. And two, do not open the freezer or disturb the water while you wait. Three, a good time to keep your water bottles in the freezer is about two and a half hours. Thank you for watching.